Okay, we're going to demonstrate how to use the RP2W software. After installing the software, you'll have an icon on the desktop. You just simply double click on the icon and it will open up the program. You get the splash screen, a little icon will start up down in the bottom showing that the program's running, and your main program interface will show up in the screen here. First thing you need to do is go into the settings and ch in the, under tools change settings. Here you can change the constants for the cameras, the inputs and outputs such as the uh, lights and the camera and pan and tilt power, the battery voltages, the scaling of the battery voltages, and the ultrasonic range uh, calibration. On the motor, you can set the encoder counts per revolution. You can change it to inches or centimeters. And the drive control. You shouldn't ever mess with the drive control unless instructed to, as it will change the effect the motors have when you're driving. Under communication, this is the main tab that needs to be addressed. You have the timer intervals. The, the TX timer is how often the uh, data is transmitted to the robot. Uh, typical setting is 150 milliseconds. Um, you can go a little bit faster. You might end up getting a little bit more latency if you try to go too fast. And if you go too slow, the robot will be sluggish. Uh, we also have a timeout constant for the robot. If it doesn't receive communication with 800 milliseconds, which is 0.8 seconds, it will stop and the program will time out completely after basically 15 seconds and those constants can be changed the pan and tilt delay are values that will turn off the pan and tilt motors after that amount of time um, so that the motors aren't constantly running um, the main thing you have to set up here is uh, whether you're setting up the robot or the remote or the client the uh, robot is what we're demonstrating right now. Um, you can set up the remote here to uh, enable it to start up immediately after the program starts. Uh, so if you put this desktop icon into the startup menu whenever you start, start your computer, the program will start and it will go right into in enabled mode for remote controlling. The uh, USB camera is set up here. You can select from which camera you want to use. Right now we're using, we could use the camera within the, built into the PC, but we're using the camera that's installed, the USB PC camera. The other uh, device you need to select is what you're going to use for the audio, and again we're using the USB camera audio microphone. The last thing is the data port that will be used to communicate from this PC to the robot. Right now our choices are COM4 or COM10. COM10 is actually a laser scanner which will not be used uh, to control the robot so we need to make sure that the correct COM4 is selected. When you're all done with your settings you hit update and close up here if you're ready for remote control you could you enable my remote controlling by just checking that box and the robot will go into a standby mode waiting for a remote connection from the remote host right now we're going to demonstrate how to use it in local mode right now I have a gamepad controller plugged into it when I go as it is demonstrated right here because the joystick is enabled. This would be grayed out if I didn't have the joystick plugged into this computer. You select data com enabled and you'll notice that we're now receiving data that we have information coming back from the robot. The main battery voltage at 26.3 volts. The front sonar is right now seeing something which is me in front of it as a red light. You can override these if you want to, because right now it will not allow me to drive forward with the red light. As I move away, you'll see the light go yellow, and then 
as I get further away it'll go green the uh, bumper switch is also down here if it's con contacted you'll see front bumper contacted and the light goes red and when you release it it goes green again you can override this if you need to push something out of the way it, obviously you want to make sure you know what you're doing when you ride with these over with the uh, overrides checked up here is our drive controls um, you can use this using the mouse pad or the game pad if you're going to use the mouse you have to hit enable drive and then all you have to do is right click here and it will start driving forward and then when you left click it will stop the drive now it will not drive forward if there's something in front of it see the red light down here at the uh, limits it's not going to allow me to drive forward I'm now using the game pad you can see the game pad and I'm trying to throttle forward I move out of the way and I've got movement and you can see the encoders at the bottom trickling the distance now if something's in front of it it will let me back up it will not let me uh, move forward though and obviously if something goes behind the back sensor it will not let me back up but it will let me drive forward you can reset the encoders right here so everything goes to zero inches and then you can keep track of how far you've driven we also have speed control this will is a, uh, beneficial to make sure that the, both motors are running at the exact same speed it helps driving in straight straighter lines uh, it's a personal preference of whether you want to use this or not over here we have the pan and tilt of the camera if you click it right now the camera is moving and you can see that the pan power has turned on and that's the timer setting we discussed earlier it will turn off after about 10 seconds and then the tilt is you can click the, either the buttons which are the presets that can be set in the uh, in the, up here in the tools change settings these are all the presets so when I hit the reverse pan position it's going to go to that position and obviously you can change these settings if uh, you want to change for whatever reason the tilt is up and down uh, and you want it down and up for whatever reason you can invert the tilt and you can invert the pan and that's about it so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the communications and turn the robot into remote mode by going down here to enable remote controlling the screen will go gray and it's basically in standby mode waiting to uh, be controlled by the client as an optional add-on you can get a URG laser scanner that will be installed at the base of the robot. This plugs into the USB of the computer. We'll click on it here, start it up. Right now it's selecting COM10 as the default address and you hit connect and it will show you in a radar view what objects are in front of it. As you can see as I'm moving away the uh, distances that are in front of it as I'm moving my hand around it you can see the, uh, the the scan change this is not directly interface to the RP2W software at this point it is just a utility that is on the robot um, and can be the source code for this is available uh, from the manufacturers of the laser scanner and it can be integrated into the program at a later date if desired there's this normal viewer and we also have a high inten uh, intensity view which uh, allows you to see how intense the uh, objects are and you can see it's just two different color gradients I'm moving my hand around um, and you can see the reflections of the obstacles in front of it.